Welcome back to Blue Collar Coder. I'm Jack Carrington, and today we're going to continue on with our look into Module Federation. And I've been thinking a lot about practical projects that could help you get Module Federation into your company or your organization, which, by the way, is the theme of our book. Very exciting. Zach and I just put that out last week. Anyway, so along that line, I've been thinking a lot about the header and the footer, because when you think about it, microsite architecture is great, allows each one of the microsites to uh, deploy independently, which is awesome. But what's the first thing you have is a problem in that space, and that's the header and the footer. We don't want every team re-implementing that. So how do we share it, particularly live share it, in a way that is reliable? So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go build a very safe header and footer by building a library that not only outputs module federation packages, but also outputs NPM packages in the same repo. And then we're going to use it over in the app so that if for some reason we can't get access to the module federation stuff or it crashes, it falls back on the header that it gets from NPM. It's really exciting. Let's jump into the code. Okay, so as we're doing for the whole month of June, we are working on module federation. And so here is the Webpack 5 documentation site for it. And we are going to go over to my starter React project, which I've turned into a template, by the way, if you want to use it that way. But we're going to go and mpx dget it, which is a fun way to do it. So let's go and create a new directory called resilient header. And then we're going to create a nav. We're going to clone that starter kit into a nav. So we're going to go build the header first. We're going to call it nav. You know, because normally like your navigation has a header and a footer. We're just going to do the header, but you know, you lather, rinse, repeat to make yourself a footer. All right, let's start it up. So it's just a basic Webpack 5 React app. Let's go take a look over in the Webpack config. So we're going to put it on 8081. Let's change out those port numbers first. We're not going to be using any CSS, so let's just remove that rule. And let's also remove the HTML stuff, since we're not going to have an HTML page for this. But we are going to go and module federate it. So let's call this nav. Everything else looks pretty good. But you know what we want to do is actually we're going to do a new trick. We're going to go and bring in package JSON here and take out its dependencies and put it into shared. Now, shared can do can be specified a bunch of ways. You can do it with an array, with just the names, or you can give it basically the format of dependencies, where it's the name and then the version. So that's pretty cool. So we're just going to do it that way. That makes it easy. If we add dependencies, then they just get automatically added to the shared. How cool is that? Okay, so next thing to do, let's remove the CSS and the HTML. I don't need those. We're going to turn this into basically just an index. We're just going to import header from header and then export it. And then we're going to create our header. So let's remove, we're not going to render it. So we're just going to remove the index CSS and the React DOM stuff. And go make ourselves a header. We'll export it. So let's add some styling here. Let's add a little padding, make the background red, the color, text color white, and make it big so everybody can see it. And just say, it's a header, big header. Okay, cool. All right, we're looking good. So let's expose it now. So we're going to add it to the exposes of our module federation. And then we're going to build it out. And then we're going to start it. And let's take a look and see if we have a remote entry. That's great. That's what we're going to use on the homepage side. So we need to go build now a homepage. So let's go and do that. Create a new window over here. And now we're going to go and deget home. Same exact thing. Same starter kit. Okay. And this one's going to be on 8080. That's fine. It's going to use CSS. That's fine. We'll call this home. 
And now we're going to bring in nav. So nav is going to be a remote. So then I'm going to go change out the name and package JSON just to be complete. And now let's go over into index.html. And I'm going to include that remote entry that's from AD81. That's going to give us our nav. It's going to put it on window.nav so we can get to it. And then we're going to import the header from the nav. And we're going to drop it in here into the template. And let's do our little trick on that share it again, just to make sure everything's cool. And let's fire it up. All right, looking pretty good. Big red header. Big red dog, big red header. Cool. And everything looks good in the network. Well, what happens if we kill the header app? So let's do that. And now, boom, now the whole app is taken down. So how, how are we going to get around this? Well, here's one idea. Let's go and lazily load it. And then drop that into suspense and see if that actually works. Let's fire that up. And nope, we get the same problem. Because suspense is really meant to uh, suspend for a component that eventually loads. Right? In this case, we know we have an error. So we need an error boundary. So let's go and create an error boundary using the template from the React site. All right, this is just a basic React class. Turns out there are no hooks that support error boundaries, so you gotta make a class. So we're gonna call this, well, I start with error boundary. And we're gonna set the state to, we haven't gotten an error yet. And then if we get an error, then we set that state. And we can log it, but we're not gonna do that. So now we really have a very simple error boundary here. So if we have an error, it's just going to say uh, some kind of fallback header here. Otherwise, we're going to put in the header. And that's suspense. And we're going to call this header wrapper. OK. Let's try this out. Nice. OK, so we still get errors in the console. But now, instead of crashing, we have this nifty text that says some kind of fallback header. But what we really want is we want the, <laughs> we want the header. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go have the nav export itself two ways. We're going to have it export it via module federation, which it does now, but also as an MPM module. So let's change our package JSON. So we've got build MF for module federation. And now build is going to run that, but it's also going to run an MPM build. She's going to do a babble. So we're just going to babble the source in the outdoor of build. Call that build npm. And now build is going to run build, both of those things. So let's uh, run this, see what happens. Uh, okay, well, we don't have babble, so let's go add that. We have babble, we just don't have the CLI, so let's go and add the CLI. Now let's try that one again. Looking good. Okay, now we have a build directory. Let's take a look. Oh, well, this is not exactly a compiled source. So let's go and add a preset for env. And that's going to give us basically ECMAScript 5 code. That's going to be nice as an NPM module. So we need to add that to our Babel RC. And then go and add that to our package JSON. Let's try this again. Okay, yeah, that's looking good. That's great. Okay. So now I've got that. Let's do one more thing. Let's go and set our main over to that build directory and the index.js in there. But how do we get these things working together? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a mono repo. So let's go back up to the top level. And then we're going to create a packages directory, and we're going to move home and nav into that. And then we're going to create a package JSON in here. Cool. Set that to private true. And then we're going to bring in a workspaces key. It's got an array with packages in it that just says, here are all the directories that have my packages. You may name packages anything you want, really. 
We're going to bring in some scripts. First, we have wipe, and that's going to wipe everything, just get rid of all the node modules. We have build, that's going to go and build all the different workspaces. And we have start, which is going to run start concurrently across all of our apps. All right, and then let's bring in uh, dependencies concurrently in WS run. And then let's clean up everything, install. Next thing we need to do is go and connect home to nav. And you can also use like yarn link or npm link for this. You don't have to do a mono repo, but this is just kind of easy. So what I need to do is yarn workspace and then give it the workspace, the kind of the destination workspace, so home, then add, and then give it the dependency I want to add. So in this case, nav at version 1.0. And that's going to do that linking. Aha, that's now in package JSON. That looks good. Okay, now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to import it. I'm going to import header as fallback header from nav. Okay. And I also want to use it. So let's uh, drop it down into here. Say that's where the fallback header goes. So let's start it up. And it doesn't work. And it's basically giving us the same error as before because the nav application isn't working. And Webpack thinks that any time I'm talking about nav, I'm actually talking about the module federation nav. So what I need to do is I need to go over into the Webpack config and I'm going to rename the module federation nav to mf-nav, so model, module federation-nav. And then anytime I reference that, that's going to be the module federation version. So I'm going to go get header. I'm going to go get the lazy version of the header from mfnav header. So that's going to tell Webpack specifically that this is the module federation version of the header, where nav just on itself is the npm version of the nav. Okay, let's try this out. All right, that works. And now we've got the red header coming in. All right, let's go and launch our nav service, run it, and it comes back red again. But let's now change the nav module federation version to be green so we can tell the difference. So we're here to header, change it to green. Looks good. Okay, so now we're running, and so we get green. And if we shut it down, we get red. Awesome. So now we've got a fallback every time. Now we get those little errors in the console, which is fine, but it still works. So regardless of whether the header is running or not running, you still get a header. You just get the older one in this case. So red is older, green is newer. So let's take a look over the network tab. And when it's green, everything's cool. Turn it off. And now remote entry doesn't work. So, so now we're just falling back onto what's already included in the source. And that's a full copy of the header, which, I mean, in this case, that's not that big of a deal. Header's not that big. But what if it were a big header? So we don't, don't want to go and bring in that fallback and have it there all the time. So can we also lazy load the fallback header? Like basically do code splitting. Yes, we can. So let's go and copy what we had for MF nav and change that into nav build header like that and call it fallback header. Nice. And then drop that also in a suspense. And we'll say that it's loading the fallback header. And then let's run it. And you can see now that we're bringing in build header when we don't have the nav application running. And then when we do have the nav application running, we don't bring that in because we don't need the fallback, but we are bringing in the header from the nav. So the application is no heavier in either case. Now, if you're really paranoid about it, sure, you can go and uh, include the header all the time. But, you know, really that choice is up to you. If you want to go and always have that header in there, that header code, that's fine. Really up to you. All right, so I just want to point out that in the new book, which is over on modulefederation.myshopify.com. It's got all kinds of recipes for how to make code resilient, as well as all kinds of other things. 
And as a shameless plug, I just want to point out, yes, it's a little bit pricey, but when you think about it, uh, we are going to be updating this thing all year. So you're going to get a year's worth of updates on this for uh, 40 bucks. And that's basically the price of a coffee per month. So that's going to keep you all up to date about Module Federation all year, which is awesome. So we're going to re be updating for every beta, the release candidates, the release, and then into all the best practices we come up with over the year as we kind of explore the area of Module Federation. All right, well, I hope that was helpful for you. I'm always interested in these practical projects in the Module Federation space. If you have more ideas for that, be sure to reach out on Twitter, at Jahur. And in the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to hit those up in the comment section down below. Take a look out for those live streams. I always post those on Twitter before we go. So join in, they're really fun. I really encourage you to do that. And then if you, of course, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like these videos, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell and you'll be notified anytime a new one of these comes out. And in the meantime, be happy, be healthy, and be safe.